The Madagascar Tree A report from 1878 made by a German explorer called Karl Like outlined a terrible ceremony. Like was on the island of Madagascar with the local tribe named the Mkodo. He describes the villagers select a sacrifice for the man-eating tree. The victim, a teenage girl, was prodded with javelin-like implements and compelled to climb this tree. Like described it as resembling a giant pineapple with long hairy tendrils at the top of it. A set of tentacles surrounded a pool of fluid, which the girl was made to drink. Like continued. The atrocious cannibal tree, that had been so inert and dead, came to sudden savage life. The slender delicate palpi, with the fury of starved serpents, quivered a moment over her head then as if instinct with demoniac intelligence fastened upon her in sudden coils round and round her neck and arms, then while her awful screams and yet more awful laughter rose wildly to be instantly strangled down again into a gurgling moan, the tendrils one after another, like great green serpents, with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and wrapped her about in fold. After fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and savage tenacity of anacondas fastening upon their prey. Research into this report believed to be the oldest such report known has shown there was no such tree on Madagascar. The Mkoto tribe could not be located and even like himself was said to be a fabrication. However in 1881, Phil Robinson, writing in Under the Punka, related the tales of his uncle's travels throughout the world. He described a man-eating tree that was to be found in Nubia. In the tale, Robinson's uncle describes the tree. This awful plant, that rears its splendid death shade in the central solitude of a Nubian fern forest, sickens by its unwholesome humors all vegetation from its immediate vicinity, and feeds upon the wild beasts that, in the terror of the chase, or the heat of noon, seek the thick shelter of its boughs, upon the birds that, flitting across the open space, come within the charmed circle of its power, or innocently refresh themselves from the cups of its great waxen flowers, upon even man. Himself when, an infrequent prey, the savage seeks its asylum in the storm, or turns from the harsh foot-wounding sword grass of the glade, to pluck the wondrous fruit that hang plumb down among the wondrous foliage. And such fruit. Glorious golden ovals, great honey drops, swelling by their own weight into pear-shaped translucencies. The foliage glistens with a strange dew, that all day long drips onto the ground below, nurturing a rank growth of grasses, which shoot up in places so high that their spikes of fierce blood-fed green show far up among the deep-tinted foliage of the terrible tree, and, like a jealous bodyguard, keep concealed the fearful secret of the charnel house within, and draw round the black roots of the murderous plant a decent screen of living green. The story continues in describing how the tree captured and ate one of the uncle's native companions, and how the uncle proceeded to shoot at the tree. When his ammunition was finally exhausted, the uncle continued his work using a knife to destroy the tree, as the tree fought back with its blood-sucking leaves, and entangling limbs. More recently, William Thomas Stead, editor of Review of Reviews, published a brief article that discussed a story purportedly found in Lucifer magazine describing a plant in Nicaragua called by the natives the Devil's Snare. This plant had the capability to drain the blood of any living thing which comes within its death-dealing touch. According to the article, Mr. Dunstan, naturalist, who has recently returned from Central America, where he spent nearly two years in the study of the flora and the fauna of the country, relates the finding of a singular growth in one of the swamps which surround the Great Lakes of Nicaragua. He was engaged in hunting for botanical and entomological specimens, when he heard his dog cry out, as if in agony, from a distance. Running to the spot whence the animal's cries came. Mr. Dunstan found him enveloped in a perfect network of what seemed to be a fine rope-like tissue of roots and fibers. The native servants who accompanied Mr. Dunstan manifested the greatest horror of the vine, which they call the devil's snare, 
and were full of stories of its death-dealing powers. He was able to discover very little about the nature of the plant, owing to the difficulty of handling it, for its grasp can only be torn away with the loss of skin and even of flesh, but, as near as Mr. Dunstan could ascertain, its power of suction is contained in a number of infinitesimal mouths or little suckers, which, ordinarily closed, open for the reception of food. If the substance is animal, the blood is drawn off and the carcass or refuse then dropped. During a trip by the Paranoid Times Artifact Society to Central America, according to the notes, as we were camping under the Madagascar tree members of our group, would go missing each night. Under the glow of the last night's moon a large green vine pulled, Rick a 200-pound member of my team out of his tent and into the canopy. After a carefully search, we could not locate him. In other words be careful where you sleep. And stay paranoid my friends.